I'm a fan of Street Fighter 2 games. Not a massive fan, but I do like to go back to them now and then. Two years ago, this was released. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Edition. Now, there's been quite a few compilations by Capcom for various platforms over the years, but none have had a stack of the Street Fighter arcade games on. So let's have a little look. In 2018, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary landed on the shelves, a compilation of the greatest arcade one-on-one -on -one fighting games. There are 12 titles to choose from, including Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2 The World Warriors, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter Alpha 1, 2 and 3, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, and Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. In 1987, Capcom would release the first of many fighting games, Street Fighter. You can only play as Ryu, unfortunately. The characters you'll fight against are Retsu, Geki, Joe, Mike, Lee, Gen, Birdie and Eagle. The two bosses you'll fight are Adon and Sagat. If you're used to playing Street Fighter 2 then you're going to struggle playing this one. Although the controls are identical to the sequels, they don't seem to be as easy to execute. This may be something to do with the PS4 controller as I have the same issue with all the other games. I know this was a hard game to control anyway. The jump moves are quite jerky, making it hard to judge when to land an attack. Graphically, this looks very nice for an 80s arcade game, and the voices aren't too bad either. Although the attack noises can be quite irritating after a while. The bonus round looks very impressive, especially the detail that's gone into the crowd. Normally games just copy and paste a poorly animated image just to pad it out. In 1991, Street Fighter 2 stormed the arcades. This is where it got totally transformed. Graphics have been improved immensely, they are more colourful and vibrant. Character sprites are now more detailed and move smoothly, making the control of the character more manageable. The soundtrack is spot on and anyone who loved this game will always remember a few tracks. The original version of the intro is present here as it was palette swapped for the home version due to race issues. Instead of one character to use throughout the game, you can now choose from 8 unique fighters. Ryu, Ken, E Honda, Chun-Li, Blanca, Zangief, Guile and Dalsine. Each can have a different colour palette depending on which button you press to select your character. The level designs are stunning and represent each character's home origin. It wasn't until Hyper Fighting that you could play as one of the four bosses, Balrog, Vega, Sagat and M. Bison. Super Street Fighter 2 was pretty much the same game with a few tweaks here and there. The character artwork has been changed for a more menacing look. Four new characters have been introduced, they are Kami, DJ, T-Hawk and Fei Long. The Alpha series changed fighting styles, graphics and powerful super moves. Now having a charge meter that can be filled by attacking your enemy, then executing it by the same command for a special twice. A whole new roster of characters are available, making this game an epic treat. Alpha 3 being my favourite on the Dreamcast, as the D-pad is perfect for the control of any character. Lastly is the Street Fighter 3 series, in which it took a very different approach in graphics compared to the rest of the series. There's not much gameplay wise that actually changed, there's still super moves although you can choose which one to use. But in addition, parrying was introduced where you can stop an attack and counter attack if your timing is correct. A new character lineup was introduced, only keeping a few originals such as Chun-Li, Akuma, Ryu and Ken. Let's take a look at the in-game features. There's a special moves list in the pause menu which is handy if it's been a while and you can't remember the moves. The screen size can be adjusted from original to full screen which I think is the best and widescreen which kind of ruins the look a bit. Then there's a filter for us oldies. Select TV for the scanline look, arcade which is slightly darker and smoother and no filter at all for a bright crisp look. Also the option to turn the cabinet border off is there too. But do you get anything else on the disc as bonus content? I mean it is the anniversary collection after all. 
There's a Street Fighter history gallery where you can scroll through the timeline and take a look at all the artwork, advertisements and merchandise that was made for each game. Characters where you can look at the bio of every character and look at their special moves frame by frame. Music where you can listen to every track from the arcade from all the games released. and the making of Street Fighter which shows various artwork images. Sadly there's no video documentaries on this which is a huge shame. Now I suppose you're thinking well there were more games than that release such as Street Fighter X and Street Fighter the movie. Well they were shit. That's why they're not on here because they don't deserve to be. This game currently is at such a cheap price that if you're a fan of the Street Fighter then you'd be stupid not to get it. At the moment you can find a sealed copy of this for as little as £14. That's great value for 12 arcade games. Ta-da.